The Universe 2 Total Shoulder System, the definitive anatomic solution for total shoulder arthroplasty. Once adequate exposure of the humeral head is attained, osteophytes are removed and the anatomic neck is defined. The head is then resected with either a free hand technique or using the head resection guide. When the guide is used, the appropriate head resection guide, right or left, large or small, is placed on the humeral head. One or two version rods are placed in the guide and aligned with the flexed elbow to determine appropriate retroversion. Once position has been established, a 2.8 mm Steinman pin is advanced down the center cannulation of the resection guide in order to secure the guide to bone. Next, two K wires are drilled through the lateral holes on the resection guide until they exit the opposite cortex. The Steinman pin is removed and the head resection guide is disengaged from the K wires. The humeral head is resected utilizing an oscillating saw and using the K wires as a guide. The 6 mm reamer is positioned at the superior lateral aspect of the humerus. The reamer is advanced down the medullary canal to the circumferential groove adjacent to the cutting flutes. This step is repeated with a 7 mm reamer if necessary. Then, a starting brooch is used to form the humeral canal. The brooch alignment guide is positioned onto the 6 mm brooch. The brooch should be advanced with a mallet until the angled laser mark most parallel to the cut is aligned with the resected surface. The neck size brooches are sequentially used until the appropriate fit is obtained. A resection protector of appropriate diameter is assembled to a trial stem one size smaller than the canal preparation. The construct is inserted into the proximal humerus until the plate comes to rest on the humeral cut. Attention is then directed to glenoid preparation. The glenoid is prepared by removing cartilage and any additional soft tissue that may interfere with placement of the glenoid implant. Next, the center of the glenoid is identified and marked. A small pilot hole is created at this center point. Place the 6 mm drill through the appropriate size number 1 drill guide and center the drill into the pilot hole. Begin drilling and continue until the mechanical stop on the drill engages the guide. Remove the drill and guide. Next, the appropriate size glenoid reamer is assembled to the reamer shaft. The nipple end of the reamer is inserted into the central glenoid drill hole and reaming is initiated. If desired, it is acceptable to ream up from the small glenoid reamer to the reamer corresponding with the chosen glenoid implant size. Pegged glenoid number two guide is moved into position by engaging the posterior peg into the previously drilled peg hole in the glenoid. The short or long six millimeter drill bit is positioned into the reamer quick connect adapter and the superior peg hole is drilled. The drill bit is detached and left in place. The 4.5 millimeter drill is then used to drill the three inferior glenoid keel holes and the guide is removed. Next, the two posterior pegs on the glenoid brooch are engaged into the previously drilled peg holes in the glenoid. A mallet is used to advance the glenoid brooch into the roughly prepared slot. Alternatively, the pegged glenoid punch can be used to prepare the keel slot instead of the brooch. This punch is advanced with a mallet until the edges of the punch are flush with the glenoid surface. The trial glenoid of appropriate size is inserted. Verify that the trial is fully seated against the glenoid surface to ensure proper fit of the actual glenoid implant. The glenoid trial can now be removed with the trial forceps. Once the glenoid has been fully prepared, the keel slot and peg drill holes are packed with cement using a syringe or finger. The pressurizer tool is pushed by hand into the glenoid to pressurize cement into the prepared keel slot and peg holes. The appropriate size glenoid implant is opened and bone cement is pressed into the keel fenestration and around the pegs. The implant is pushed into the cement-filled glenoid vault and impacted. The glenoid component is held firmly in place until the cement has cured. The two-hole glenoid guide is moved into position by engaging the posterior peg into the previously drilled peg hole in the glenoid.
The short drill bit is positioned into the quick connect adapter and the superior glenoid hole is drilled. The drill bit is detached and left in place. A second drill is used to drill the inferior glenoid hole and the guide is removed. A small rongeur is used to remove the bone bridge between the three drill holes. A mallet is used to advance the glenoid punch into the roughly prepared slot. The trial glenoid of appropriate size is inserted. Verify that the trial is fully seated against the glenoid surface to ensure proper fit of the actual glenoid implant. The glenoid trial can now be removed with the trial forceps. Once the glenoid has been fully prepared, the bone slot is packed with cement to create good cement interdigitation within the glenoid vault. The appropriate size glenoid implant is opened and bone cement is pressed into the fenestrations on the implant keel. The keel of the implant is pushed into the cemented glenoid vault and impacted. The glenoid component is held firmly in place until the cement has cured. Once the glenoid portion of the procedure is finished, attention is redirected back to humeral stem implantation. The resection protector and trial stem are removed. The appropriate size humeral stem is opened and placed in the prepared canal. The stem is impacted until the trunnion contacts the humeral surface and is fully seated. The inferior locking screw on the medial portion of the trunnion is tightened by visually confirming the INF mark is rotated past the indicator line on the torque driver. Next, the torque driver is used to tighten the version screw located on the Morse taper by visually confirming that the SUP mark is rotated past the indicator line on the torque driver. The appropriate trial head is chosen and taking offset into consideration, the head is rotated into the correct position and pushed into place. A trial reduction can now be performed. After the trial reduction, an implant head is rotated to the correct offset and impacted onto the stem using the head impactor. The shoulder is reduced and wound closure is performed per the surgeon's protocol. For further information on the Universe 2 Total Shoulder System and the Arthrex Surgical Skills Education Programs, contact your Arthrex representative.